Greetings, this is Greg. In World War II, the Russians had a special type of throttle that added 100 horsepower to their engines at low altitudes. It was used on the IL-2, MiG-3, and others. It's very different from anything I've seen on any Western engine. It's sort of interesting from a political history standpoint that the Russians never shared this with their allies. On one hand, the U.S. was sending them P-39s, P-40s, P-63s, P-47s, and even a small number of P-51s. The Russians were building licensed versions of the Wright Cyclone for use in their early fighters, and in large versions of this engine in their later fighters. Yet it seems they kept this throttle a secret. I wonder what General Patton would have made of this. The U.S. only discovered this throttle after the war by translating a wartime report on the subject. The Germans examined, captured, and crashed Russian airplanes, and German engineers did some detailed evaluations of this throttle and published the report in August of 1942. The U.S. government agency NACA published a translation in 1947. It was used on at least two engines, but for brevity, I'll only discuss the AM-38 engine, which was used in the IL-2, IL-10, and probably some MiG-3s. Here's how it worked. At very low altitudes, the supercharger's inlet needs to be restricted or throttled. Otherwise, as with essentially all supercharged World War II aero engines, it would overboost and cause damage. Typically, this is done with a conventional butterfly-type throttle. As the airplane gains altitude, a boost pressure regulator will allow the butterfly throttle to open more and more to maintain manifold pressure. At some point, the throttle will be fully open, and at that point, any increase in altitude will result in decreased manifold pressure and engine power. The altitude range before the AM38 engine loses manifold pressure is incredibly narrow. It's from sea level up to about 6,500 feet. Compare that with an early U.S. Navy fighter like the F-4F Wildcat, which is able to maintain its rated manifold pressure up to 19,000 feet. It's clear the Russians were optimizing this engine for performance down low, which makes sense in view of the way the war was being fought on Germany's eastern front. With a conventional butterfly throttle, as used in the more typical applications, throttling the supercharger causes it to become inefficient. This should be easy to understand. If you try to breathe through a narrow straw, your body will have to exert a lot of energy to inhale. Throttling the supercharger does the same thing. What the Russians did is employ what the German report called a swirl throttle. Here's a picture of it. When it's partially closed, it causes the air to move in a swirling motion in the direction of the supercharger's rotation. This reduces the amount of energy needed to spin the supercharger and reduces the supercharger's discharge temperatures. The gains are significant. It's about 100 horsepower on a 1700 horsepower engine. Of those gains, about 30 are from the decreased drive power requirements of the supercharger, and about 70 are from the drop in supercharger discharge temperatures. Here's the throttle mounted on the supercharger. In the next picture, you can see the supercharger's impeller. Now, it's a bit tough to tell because this is a very grainy photograph, and I haven't been able to find any other pictures showing this same part, but this impeller looks like a somewhat crude version of the type used in various American radial engines from the 1930s. In fact, the entire AM38 engine is fairly crude by World War II standards, but it did the job, and the swirl throttle helped. Here's the whole thing put together on the back of the engine. Now, the advantage of the swirl throttle would decrease with altitude, once the throttle is fully open, the advantage is lost, but down near sea level, an extra 100 horsepower could be a lifesaver, and in other applications and under other conditions, the German report states that gains could be up to 150 horsepower or more. As far as I can tell, no other country used this type of throttle. Although the Ger Germans, well, the Germans clearly knew about it and they fully understood it as seen in the 1942 report, but they didn't use it because it wasn't compatible with their far more advanced and superior supercharging systems. They simply had no use for it. Today, this technology isn't in use at all. There are no supercharged piston engine combat airplanes being manufactured. Of course, they were replaced by jets long ago. I can't really think of an automotive application either. It's a lot easier to vary the boost from a turbocharger to compensate for altitude if that's your issue. I suppose if someone was building a race car for the Pikes Peak Hill Climb, and if the rules required them to use a centrifugal supercharger, then this technology could be used. But short of that, it's just a cool idea that had its moment in history, but its time has passed. I hope you like this video, and I hope you have a great day. If you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe and make some comments and let me know what else you would like me to cover. Thanks, have a great day.